Okay, it's time to talk about death costs. This was on August 9th of 2021, when I dropped a 13 minute, not really edited, not scripted at all rant about how death costs were bothering me and ruining my RuneScape experience. And I think from this point, death costs have just gotten worse and worse and worse as prices have become more and more inflated. And today we have an update on death costs official from Jagex. They tweeted out a sneak peek of their 2023 content plan and everything in it is locked. With it, they tweeted out this, which was very quickly decoded to say, there are only two things certain in life, which of course are death and taxes. So let's take a look at the design doc that was dropped earlier today. They start things off with a blanket. The amount you will pay will be reduced by at least 80% compared to current death costs. And they start off by outlining what the current death cost system looks like. As you can see here, for low value items, you have to pay up to 15% to get them back. And for high value items, you'd have to pay half a percent of the total value to get it back, which means for a max cash stack item, so 2.1 billion GP, you'd have to pay 10.8 million coins to reclaim it. And let's scroll down to the super complicated description of how the new death cost system works. That's it. It is one single 0.1 percentage cost applied to everything. It is simple, it is easy to understand, and it is 80% cheaper than the most expensive bracket prior to this change. But if you wanna see this even further visualized, they've actually listed a bunch of different item values, the current live reclaim of it in the current death system, and then what the new reclaim is gonna be with the percentage decrease. So you can actually visualize that on a 1 million GP item, your decrease in death cost is gonna be 96.72%. And then as you get into more expensive gear, let's say gear worth a max cash stack, you're gonna go from a live reclaim of just under 11 million coins all the way down to 2.1. To me, this is pretty much spot on. Dying is still punishing. You're not gonna wanna go and die 20 times in an hour just for the fun of it. A fully loaded out end game setup with two combat styles is still gonna cost you five or six mil to die with, but that's a whole lot better and a whole lot more fair than spending 30 for a playstyle choice. To me, that's all I could have ever hoped for for this update. I made this video because I felt like death costs were really getting in the way of my gameplay experience. They felt way too punishing for what they were, and I knew a lot of people were feeling the same way. I also really like that they're front loaded so that the cheaper your setup, the further decreased your death costs are for the previous system. This gives people a chance to kind of ease their way into the death cost system with some exceptionally cheap deaths that, you know, could even be borderline funny. Like if you die with a 1 million GP item or setup and you end up having to pay a total of a thousand coins to get it back. It's very trivial at that point, but it gets people used to the system. And as you can move down this list and get into the more expensive items, this feels a lot more fair to me. They're also adding some QOLs to the system as well, which makes sense. I personally am not a huge fan of this user interface, but to be fair, it's probably a very early mock-up. At the bottom of the page, they mentioned that there's gonna be another dev blog in the coming weeks, which is gonna go into further details. There was one other important piece of information in this news post, which is that they'll have to make adjustments elsewhere in the economy to implement these changes. Death costs account for a whopping 62% of the gold removed from the game, and to compensate, they are gonna be introducing a 2% grant exchange sales tariff. And this is big news. I think there's been a lot of pushback about the idea of getting a grand exchange tax, but I really like it. My argument against death costs as a good money sink was always that it's punishing one specific group and it's putting the burden of the economy on one specific group, which is people of all levels trying to improve in PVM. And to me, it is a lot more fair and a lot more evenly distributed to put a sales tax on the convenience of the Grand Exchange. And if the 2% tax is too high for you, you could very easily go to the Grand Exchange World 2 and sell it that way. But I think for most people, the Grand Exchange is extremely convenient and 2% is at the end of the day, gonna be a drop in the bucket. This was sent to me by a player named Bloody, and he took the highest volume items traded on the Grand Exchange that you can find from the website. And he looked at the amount they're traded, the amount of GP that would be moving, and then he applied the GE tax to that. And he found that just in these top items, none of which have extremely high prices, but are frequently traded, you're gonna be pulling out just under 6 billion GP from the economy every single day, which seems pretty good to me. Okay, with all that covered, I now wanna pass the question off to you guys. What do you think about this? And it's a highly anticipated thing that I would have hoped would have come out a long time ago, but as always, it's better late than never. And I'm extremely excited that at the very least, even though it's late, they've done what I think is a really, really good job of it. I think it's fair. I think it's solid. I think it should stand the test of time. And at the end of the day, the burden of the economy is no longer being put on people trying to learn PVMing. So that's a huge win for me.